Charaka Samhita, a scientific synopsis by Priyada Ranjan Ray and Hirendranath Gupta. Chapter 1 Authorship and Date of Composition. The Charaka Samhita, literally, treatise compiled by Charaka, is a Sanskrit work of great antiquity. Though primarily a compendium on Ayurveda, science of life, the philosophical concepts and views that form a considerable part of the Charaka Samhita, serving, as it were, as the background of knowledge and practice of medicine in ancient India, must be considered an integral part of the work. It is difficult, if not altogether impossible, to fix an exact date for its composition or even to identify its author with any certainty. The only text available at present is a redaction by Dhridabala of the 9th century AD, who repeatedly mentioned in the body of the text that he merely edited an ancient work of this name, restoring and reconstructing some missing passages. In fact, a major portion of the last book of the Samhita, Siddhisthana, was added by him. The text gives a detailed account of how the Charaka Samhita was originally composed, a conference of sages meeting somewhere in the Himalayas with the common object of alleviating human suffering and assuring a long, healthy and satisfying life to all, decided to take all steps to acquire the necessary knowledge for that purpose. Sutrasthana Chapter 1 Later, one of the sages, Atreya Punarvasu by name, requested six of his disciples to compile his teachings in writing. Sutrasthana Chapter 2 the treatise of Agnivesha was considered the best and the Samhita of Agnivesha, revised by Charaka at some later date, formed the basis of Dridhabala's edition. In fact, the major portion of Charaka Samhita is presented in the form of questions and answers between the disciple Agnivesha and his teacher Atreya. There is no reason why this account, as far as the sequence of authorship is concerned, should not be accepted as correct. Chakrapani Datta, 11th century, in his commentary Ayurveda Deepika on Charaka Samhita, practically asserted the identity of the later with the original Agnivesha Samhita, of which he seemed to have a full knowledge. A great deal of difficulty is, however, encountered when we try to identify Atreya, Agnivesha and Charaka with authors of the same names mentioned in Brahminical, Buddhistic, Chinese and Arabic literatures. Some of these names are found to occur as early as the Vedic period, 2nd millennium BC, and some as late as the early centuries of the Christian era. It had been a common practice in India for scholars of lesser fame to assume the titles of their more renowned predecessors in their particular fields with a view to fixing a stamp of authority on their own works. This fact introduces an element of uncertainty in any tentative chronology. Most of the hymns of 5th Mandala of Rigveda are attributed to Atre or Atreya. Again, Atreya is the name of a famous medical teacher at Takshila who, according to many Buddhistic and Chinese texts, was the preceptor of Jivaka, the personal physician of Gautama Buddha, 6th century BC. But the Atreya of Charaka Samhita is Atreya Punavasu, son of Chandrabhaga, Sutrasthana 13, 99. Whereas no Vedic text, Buddhistic source or Chinese work even mentions the title Punarvasu or the parentage. The Charaka Samhita itself makes a mention of yet another Atreya Sutrasthana 1.9. Nowhere does it mention Takshila as Atreya's place of residence. On the contrary, Punarvasu Atreya is described as taking a walk in Kampilya, a city on the river Ganges, Vimanasthana 3.3. Though the possibility of an excursion or of migration cannot be ruled out, there is nothing to support his identity with the teacher of Jivaka except the surname Atreya, which is derived from the name Atri and means a descendant or follower of Atri. 
the identification of the author of Charaka Samhita which with the teacher at Taxila made by Rudolf Hornall Bow manuscript introduction page number 58 is not based therefore on any convincing evidence as for agnivesha the mahabharata refers to one agnivesha as receiving the knowledge of dhanurvidya science of archery from bharadwaja adi parva shlokas 5107 and 5108 whereas in the charaka samhita agnivesha is merely a disciple of atreya who in his turn received his knowledge of ayurveda also from one bharadwaja sutra sthana chapter 1 here again an identification would be hazardous the chinese text of tripitaka names one tehe lokya that is charaka in sanskrit as a trusted physician in the court of the king kanishka circa 200 ad in the northwest of india this charaka has been identified by silvain levi nozules indo uh, sites in j dot a dot 1896 page 451 to 480 and by hornole studies in the medicine of ancient india part 1 page 9 with the author of the charaka samhita here again the identification is far from convincing for the name and title of charaka literally a wanderer has been found in many places and contexts in ancient indian literature and is in fact associated with a particular school of medical knowledge reference to this is found in the black ayurveda l renew uh, eclos Vedic, page number one twenty nine, one forty four, etc. The Taittiriya Samhita, known to be a work dating from more than a thousand years before the Christian era, also speaks about the Charaka school of medicine, though not in complementary terms. Taittiriya Samhita, six four nine. It is more than possible that all subsequent Charakas, including the court physician of kanishka were later exponents of this medical school and centuries might have elapsed between any two holders of this name or title from passages in chakrapani datta's ayurveda deepika and in shivadas sena's commentary on the later work 12th century ad it appears that patanjali the famous grammarian circa 2nd century bc and a great alchemist also revised charaka samhita if these are to be believed charaka cannot by any stretch of imagination be placed in the court of kanishka 3 or 4 centuries later it is therefore extremely difficult to give any definite date when atreya agnivesha or charaka of our text might have flourished p c ray history of hindu chemistry volume 1 introduction page number 13 to 23 after considering all internal and relevant evidence places the date of composition of charaka samhita in the pre buddhistic period that is before 600 bc his arguments are summarized below one the text of charaka is written in a haphazardous and unsystematic style intermingled with metaphysical disquisitions in sharp contrast with the precise style of works composed in the buddhistic and later periods two vedic gods and mantras occur repeatedly but references to puranic mythology and buddhistic scriptures are conspicuous by their absence three charaka follows vedic texts in uh, counting the number of bones 360 in the human body and in assuming the age of 30 as the limit of man's youth Four, the prose style of Charaka resembles that of Brahmanas of the Vedas. Five, the treatise appears to be a record of the deliberations of Vedic rishis, often giving their discussions in full. Wide discourses on taste, Sutra Sthana, chapter twenty-six, and clearly mentions that it was composed shortly after those deliberations. Six, Patanjali, second century B.C. He is known to have made a redaction of the charaka samhita 
Jean Filioza, La Doctrine Classic de la Medicine Indini, page number 1719, also believes that significant references found in the text, the stage of development of the language employed, and careful comparison with other works of established dates can give a more reliable idea of the date of composition than the names and the dates of supposed authors. He, however, considers the style and composition definitely post-Vedic and having considerable affinity with the Arthashastra of Kautilya, 3rd century BC. According to him, the Charaka Samhita was composed in a period which antedates the Christian era but not by a very long period. He gives the 2nd or 1st century BC as the most probable date. Some workers, Filioza, Locositato and Gananath Sen, Pratyaksha Shariram, Volume 1, page number 8 to 11, have identified Charaka with Patanjali, but the evidence in support of this view is not very convincing. Winternet's History of Indian Literature, Part 1, assigns 100 AD as the approximate date of Charaka Samhita and the Chronology Committee of the National Institute of Sciences of India, Proceedings 1952, after considering all available evidence, adopted this date for the text, which formed the basis of the Dhabala's redaction.